What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode review for uh, Summertime Rendering. This is episode nine, and with me, as always, I have Blue Spit. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what we sort of get, like, some part of the story of, like, how the real Ushio met the Shadow Ushio, and she pretty much uh, starts the, starts off on the video confirming that, uh, that Shinpei can trust the Shadow Ushio because it poses no threat to anyone. What what it doesn't answer is like where where the shadow Ushio really even came from in the first place and why she really showed no hostility in the first place which which is kind of puzzling mm -hmm. and it also throws in a lot more questions at us uh, by the end of the episode part particularly like on how how shadows shadows work and supposedly dispro disproving a theory that Hizuru or Rinose uh, told Shinpei that shadows can only only copy a person once. When by in this episode we actually see two different shadows of Ushio in this episode. Yeah, we actually see one of the shadows try to copy her, or uh, either her or her shadow. I'm not exactly sure to be it, honest because it gets kind of a little bit confusing. Yeah, I mean, so so the episode starts off well with uh, U Ushio and Mio. Um, and uh, along with uh, the re rest of the townsfolk on the island uh, cleaning out the beaches. Well, uh, of course, um, we, we see uh, uh, Ushio and Mio spotting, uh, you know, the shadow Ushio, which Ushio tries to go around and look for her, which, which uh, she ends up disappearing, only to pop up again uh, at at her place uh, soon afterwards. Uh, pr pretty much, uh, uh, of course, like, Ushio, like, initially distrusts the shadow, but she's already really quick to trust trust the you know her own shadow s soon afterwards and telling her like uh uh that like uh, there there's a, a shadow looking to go after shiori uh soon afterwards so uh U ushio and her shadow go out uh i guess to, uh, somewhere to an uh, an old abandoned clinic somewhere on, on the island owned by uh uh so's father i, I think uh I mean, it's the same guy who uh, in investigated or did an autopsy on Ushio uh, in the sh earlier on in the show. So they they go with. Was there, that like, also the guy that we saw in what was it episode five that had the uh, there was like the shadow in the wheelchair? Yeah, that's uh, that's the same guy. Uh, but okay. it's it's it, I mean it's still strange that you know we it that it reveals that but we don't really get an answer. Uh, as of right now, as to why um, you know So's father is hanging out with a shadow in, in that wheelchair, so and then well, I feel like and, it's and trying to imply there's more going on with his character, I guess. Yeah, I mean he he's he's the one who, um, you know, of course, like hit the fact that uh, Ushio had strangle marks on her neck uh, at the time of her at mm -hmm. the time of her death, and he was the one who um, was the one who confirmed that she died of drowning. At the time, so he's apparently hiding something, uh, assuming if um, Shinpei and the others are willing to question him later. Yeah, I feel like it's going to come to that eventually. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, well, like I said, uh, while they're at the the clinic, they are attacked by another shadow who's who looks well almost like Ushio, which, like I said, it, it I don't know if it really disproves the theory of you know of um, his you were saying that. A uh, shadow can only copy a person once. Um, whether that you know she made a mistake on her part, or if this shadow Ushio that we know like for the last few episodes is, you know, like a special case of some sorts. I I think uh, it definitely is a special case, considering that this shadow Ushio is not is not like the other shadows, and the shadows, are, at least to me, seem to be like a kind of high, like sort of a hive mind in a way. Uh, where they all kind of behave like they, they all kind of have it's at least it seems like the same goal and they're all pretty much all evil or malicious in some way but the shadow ushio isn't um so i feel like yeah there's some weird exception with her um and also in this episode we learned that apparently the shadow ushio has like uh uh, what is it? She uses her hair as a weapon or something? Yeah, like, <laughs> she she literally so weird. Was, she she literally uh, str you know sliced her own well, like her second shadows version to ribbons uh, soon afterwards, and she can use you yeah. know she can use the shadow on the on the ground to to, to at least uh, I guess slide slide around different areas like other shadows do, which 
you know, which uh, initially in the last episode she tried to display those abilities, but apparently I don't I don't think she like she has any. I think she lost her memories at, at the time uh, by the end of this episode, or you know, during the flashback of this episode. Yeah, she would have had to because she doesn't seem to. I mean, she didn't remember any of this. No, and until until she unlocked the video uh, that they recorded earlier. So w mm -hmm. once uh, after you know after they they view the scene, uh, Shadow Ushio um, regains some. I guess regains some of her memories, and then she shows um, she shows uh, Shin Shinpei and So uh, like I, I guess like a pre-recorded memory. That you know that, like, so it, it's weird. Like they take him into like this other dimension-looking place, which, uh, which, like, replays everything that that's specifically happened at the time of Ushio's death. Yeah, um, basically, they're just viewing the memory as outside observers. They can't actually like interact with anything. Yeah, and of course, it uh, they supposedly show off the certain details of how shiori uh, ended up getting killed uh, uh, so first like shiori uh, was grabbed by her shadow and um and of course both ushio and her shadow try to rescue her uh at one point like uh, they nearly succeed but unfortunately this leads to you know to the event in which um the real ushio gets strangled by uh, uh, shiori's shadow and then um ushio's shadow was really close to you know saving shiori before she was also caught herself and then uh you know the real shiori was eventually killed and replaced by her shadow yeah um yeah and i i, I guess like yeah both ushio and, and her shadow like yeah they they do uh well yeah they they both i guess fail in a way they, they both die um and then along with uh shiori uh who gets replaced and then, like, uh, the shadow, it appears like the shadow Shiori, like, it actually, like, touches Shinpei, and it turns out to be, uh, uh what's that girl's name? The, the, um, well, they call it the mother, uh, the, or yeah. something. Uh, so, but, which, I mean, this, like I said, this episode does answer only a few questions, but not all of them. I mean, we, we still don't know how, yeah. uh, Ryunosuke even got the recorded message from, uh, from Ushio or Shadow Ushio or whoever it was that which convinced her. Yeah, to that was what I was wondering um, because as we know, yeah, uh, she got that message, but we don't know like when that message was sent. Um, and uh, I feel like there's a lot more that we're not, obviously we're not being told uh, that either it was, I guess, the real Ushio or the Shadow Ushio who sent, who sent the message. Um, I'm guessing there's probably going to be more stuff to do with like some kind of you know with time travel and all that maybe that gets revealed later on in the series yeah that's the only thing i could figure um or maybe something happened that we didn't see yet um, i but. i would have to assume that that and it's also like i'm also wondering how the shadow ushio like because she didn't really know like in this episode she didn't really seem to know about any like future events or anything like that whereas in the message ushio seemed to know what was going to happen um yeah, per particularly on, like uh, uh, you know, yeah particularly like ushio knows about the the calamity in the 24th and uh, she yeah. she tells uh, uh Ryunosuke to, to to look for shinpei and trust them uh, that he he'll help out with you know whatever is going to happen um but we, you know like i said we, we still don't know like how she got that message nor nor do we ever really get to find out like where the shadow ushio really came from and why she shows no malicious intentions um you know to work alongside the other shadows nor do we even get to find out like how shinpei uh or where he got gets that um you know the right eye and his yeah uh, I, was, I was actually about to say that like where did he get the eye from how did he get the eye oh uh, we, we still don't know yeah i mean we, we do we do know that uh supposedly it belongs to the you know to the mother because we see um you know, the, supposedly this mother like has a blank, um, you know, right eye and, and a red one. So it's pretty mm -hmm. clear that, you know, that the blue eye really belongs to her. But how Shinpei got it in the first place is another question. But yeah, overall, it was it's a pretty decent episode. Um, 
uh, I mean, of course, like I said, it it just thro throws in more questions than answers, and hopefully, we get this uh, we get to see um, more more revealed probably by the next few episodes. I mean, we're pretty close to the end of the first core anyway, and mm -hmm. you know, ho hopefully, we we'll get we'll get to see what uh, what's going to happen next. But um, but based based on the way things are going, I don't think um, you know Shinpei is going to be able to solve everything in this particular loop because. I would assume he would probably need to do maybe at least two to three more loops just to, I guess, to resolve everything or or do something to, you know, to move certain events into motion. Yeah, I feel like I feel like the major one of the major twists, at least, is probably going to be that Shinpei did something in the future to kind of cause some of this stuff to happen, because as as we assume or as we theorized, he he, he potentially stole the eye from the mother and that's how he has it um ushio sent that message uh and i feel like this is all that this is stuff w that it, it might have been a result of something that happens later on in the series that we have let, yet to see uh that could have caused all the events of the series to happen or something uh is what i could guess but at least it seems that way um but yeah I, we don't know really specifically like what what that was or why it happened um but yeah i but i kind of like how the series does give us more questions than answers considering this is more like a there is it's more of like a mystery uh the, you know more of a mystery series in a way um so it you know i, I kind of like that it does that kind of keeps us guessing um you know we still don't have you know we, we still have a lot of questions um, yeah i mean so, we're not we didn't we're not even halfway done through the series just yet i mean we yeah. still have a ways to go and ho hopefully like um you know that they'll you know continue continue the show without putting us in into a like maybe a three-month hiatus or anything like that yeah i kind of hope they don't take a break or anything in the middle of it um but i guess i'll have to see mm -hmm. uh but yeah i thought this was a pretty good episode it's uh it revealed some things i didn't really expect <laughs> like for uh, you know for example like the shadow ushio having shown up like uh, or having been, I guess, in a way, been involved with, you know, how Ushio, the real Ushio, died. Um, I, I do remember, like, she did see the shadow Ushio um, before her death, but I didn't really know how involved, like, she was with her shadow self. Um, so that was kind of interesting. But that's mostly what we get from this episode. You know, we get to see what was what happened in the past, and uh, and th there were some interesting things there. Um, but yeah, this the series continues to be pretty good. Like I'm pretty invested in what's going on. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I don't really have too much else to say about it. Um, so I, I guess I guess you don't really have too much to say though. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, the, uh, well, yeah, yeah, we'll hopefully hopefully we'll get a little more answers hopefully before uh, the end of this first core. As as for the mm -hmm. second core, it's just it's just another question, just due to the fact that, um, and, and uh, of course Disney did. Um, and uh, get the rights to stream the show on their streaming site. It's just a question of when they're going to air it on, you know, on, you know, on their streaming service and how it's, you know, how it's going to be presented in, in a way. Because, right. Yeah, because it's. I mean, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like D Disney didn't make I don't know, a good bet, you know, getting getting this show because of how good it is so far. I mean, I'm just. The, it's just a question of like how it's going to be presented with all, you know, with what content it's. Uh, you know contained it into the show so far yeah it, it, i mean it is also a bit annoying that i'm guessing it's just going to be a disney plus exclusive show i mean of course there's always the third party websites we can use to watch it but um yeah I'm, it, it's it is very weird knowing the show like this is is an exclusive it is going to be like i guess an exclusive to their streaming service uh, I, I would expect this would be on, I don't know, like Netflix or I, I mean, Amazon you know, Prime. It is a c competitive market now for all these streaming services nowadays. So uh, yeah. apparently they got to one up each other in some ways. But uh, Pretty much. but yeah, it's just it's just Disney's way of like, you know, introducing themselves into the anime market after, you know, after their successful venture with uh, presenting Star Wars Visions uh, earlier this year. So they're, they're, they're really... Um, they're definitely gonna go go for it soon afterwards. I mean, this isn't the first time they mm. Disney's gone into anime. They've they've had distributed other 
an anime series before like well anime anime films in particular in the past um you're talking about studio ghibli yeah the, right. the, the ghibli stuff yeah but th- i think this is like the first mm-hmm. time like uh, they're they're going for like uh other you know other uh studios you uh, know in in particular so um yeah which makes me a little bit concerned as to how they're going to handle that um because as we remember too, like I'm, I'm kind of wondering how they're going to handle like the translation, not of the subtitles, uh, because I mean, with Star Wars Visions, like that was, uh, I'm pretty sure that was you could watch in Japanese, but I know like they um, kind of right out the gate it was done. I, I think so. I, I did mention this um, a few weeks ago before, but the, it's just the subtitle setup is just terrible uh for star wars vision yeah i I, I don't i kind of wonder if disney is like ready for like you know is is actually like knows what they're doing in that regard yeah it's um it it did star wars visions does have a japanese uh language option but its subtitles option is just it's close it's only closed caption and it yeah doesn't it's it's in it's only going by the recorded lines of the English dub rather than like just having to translate it through, you know, just having a normal translation well, like you would normally do. Yeah. And with summertime rendering, we're not really sure if if when it comes out on Disney Plus, if they're going to come out with a dub or if they're just going to release it as it is. And that and then that in that regard, they don't like they have to translate the subtitles, not from a dub or anything like that. Um yeah, because so yeah, I'm kind of curious how they're going to handle that. Yeah, I mean, and also the dub, the dub for Star Wars Visions, it's not, it, it's not based off of you know, of um, like how Funimation or Crunchyroll does. I think what Bang Zoom does it, does uh, the yeah. the dub for, uh, you know, for all the anime that Funimation and Crunchyroll does. But for for Disney, they they hired a lot of like top tier Hollywood actors to you know to do the voices. Um, in Star Wars Visions, mm-hmm. so it's it's hard to tell like how and how you know and who's going to be doing the voice work for uh, for the English dub for this show. But I mean, we'll, we'll have we'll have to see. It it just it all depends on you know on whether or not they're going to distribute the first core pretty soon. I mean, it, I mean, we only got like what like three more episodes left of this first core. Or maybe maybe an extra one, depending on how, if it's going to be. I think it was twenty four episodes, wasn't it? It's twenty five. Uh, it's going to be twenty five episodes. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean the first the first score is coming coming to an end pretty soon, and we'll have to see um, how Disney is going to whether or not if Disney is going to end up distributing this on uh, on Disney Plus pretty soon, or if they're just going to have us wait all the way until the end of episode twenty five, and then they'll distribute it later. Yeah, I, I have a feeling they'll probably wait till it's all out before yeah. distributing it. Uh, they'll probably try to do the old Netflix model where they just wait until the whole series is done before putting it out. I mean, Netflix like uh, released it each core, so I think uh, it's uh, possible Disney might. I guess if they take a break, like we were speculating, they might. Um, then maybe, um, but if they don't, then yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, so I guess that all I guess that all being said, guys, um until um until next time, we will see you all later.